Hudson County Community College serves more than 18,000 credit and non-credit students annually. HCCC has three convenient locations in the Journal Square neighborhood of Jersey City, a North Hudson campus in Union City, and the Secaucus Center at the Hudson County Schools of Technology. Our Foundation Art Collection's 2,000 works are displayed in every HCCC building. We offer nearly 90 degree and certificate programs across multiple disciplines. Our culinary arts and hospitality management program is nationally accredited and recognized. Innovative Hudson Helps and Hudson Scholars Services focus on students' needs and their success. We have partnerships with major four-year colleges and universities in the greater New Jersey and New York area and beyond. Our commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion has been recognized by several national programs. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of Hudson County Community College, Chris Reber. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm humbled and honored to have this opportunity to speak with you this morning. I'm a proud member of the LGBTQ community. Throughout my 42-year career in higher education, I've been passionate about the central importance of diversity, equity, and inclusion in higher education and in our society. And I'm particularly proud of the dynamic, respectful, inspirational, and trailblazing people at Hudson County Community College and throughout the communities and region we serve. It's the honor of my life to lead and support Hudson County Community College, where I'm currently in my fifth year as president. I thank Gus Penaranda, Christian Fuscarino, Stephen Blajewski, the NJ Pride Chamber of Commerce, Blake Drummond, today's presenters, and everyone who's contributed to organizing this extraordinary first ever inaugural summit. If I may, I'd like to begin with a very personal story that I was asked to put into writing for a book on parenting a number of years ago. I want to give you some context for who I am and how I found my place and developed my passion as an LGBTQ educator and leader. I'm reading for the next few moments excerpts from my published story. My greatest regret in life is that when I was a young person, I didn't have the courage to admit to myself or anyone else for that matter that I was gay. It was a different time in the 1960s and 1970s with gay people widely closeted in fear and trepidation. The world was hostile and nearly universally uninformed about what it means and how it happens to be gay. Nearly all who were gay in my childhood years in central Pennsylvania lived in constant fear that others would discover this terrible truth about them. Although my parents were both loving and supporting, supportive of my older brother and me in every way, I always doubted they would have been accepting of my sexual orientation. They both passed before I was ready to share this with them, so I'll never know. As a teenager and college student, I convinced myself that I was bisexual and committed to and fully capable of leading, leading a heterosexual lifestyle. While an undergraduate at Dickinson College, I met one of the finest people I've ever known and loved, and we were eventually married. And during our 23-year marriage, Mary Kay and I enjoyed a more than comfortable lifestyle. We had very similar values and beliefs, enjoyed one another's company and doing things together. We eventually had two children, our son Jonathan and our daughter Catherine, whom we of course love unconditionally. But as time marched on and the years passed, it became increasingly difficult and eventually impossible to be someone I wasn't. I knew I was being unfair to Mary Kay and my kids by living a lie. The growing lack of intimacy in our marriage led to tension and brittleness that affected our kids and eventually every part of our life. After 23 years of marriage, Mary Kay and I made the long dreaded decision to separate and divorce. Telling our kids who were 10 and eight at the time was excruciating. We had to tell them we were divorcing, but they were too young to hear the core reason for this, that I was gay. We met as a family. Mary Kay and I told Jonathan and Catherine that we both loved them and that we always would, and that while I would be moving away, I would always be their dad and involved in their lives. 
Having this painful conversation and leaving my family was the lowest moment in my life. I lived and worked 90 minutes from the kids, and for the next eight years, John and Catherine visited me on many weekends and holidays, and I attended school and other events in their hometown. But I was not with them, and I knew I was not being the kind of father that I wanted to be and that the kids deserved. Gradually, society became more accepting of the LGBT community, and I began to gain the courage to come out to those I loved and later to others. Following my nervous and rehearsed comments, Mary Kay calmly acknowledged to me that she knew this, she had known it for some time, and she was remarkably understanding and supportive. Had our roles been reversed, I doubt that I would have been so understanding. As the years passed, I increasingly agonized over when and how to tell my children, Jonathan and Catherine. How would they respond? Would they be embarrassed, ashamed? Would they stop seeing me, stop loving me? It felt like I was carrying a million pound weight on my shoulders as I lived and worked in deeply red western Pennsylvania. Although I didn't plan the specific day on which I would tell the kids, a moment surfaced when I was with John, who was now 16, and the, and the timing felt right, and John has had a history of significant challenge in his own life. My heart beating harder than I can ever remember and with a painful sinking feeling in my stomach, I told him. I blurted it out using the most sensitive and caring words I could muster. And I'll never forget John's response, which has forever changed my life. Dad, it doesn't matter. I love you and I know how it feels when you are sometimes not understood by others. I later told Catherine and her response was very similar. My kids' openness and love made it possible for me to become a whole person for the first time in my life and hopefully a better father and a better human being. Today, Jonathan, Catherine, and Mary Kay are also close to my husband, Kerry, and we're all an extended, loving, non-traditional family, and I know that I am so blessed to have that um, opportunity and outcome. After telling the kids, I came out to my colleagues and friends who were eventually affirming and accepting, even though we, we worked in deep red Appalachia at that time. Coming out to my colleagues and community also taught me that leaders who are authentic and comfortable in their own skin are the best leaders. They're real people, and they are respected for being honest and truthful. And bringing honesty and visibility to this deeply personal truth opened the door for me to eventually seek a college presidency, something that I thought previously would never happen. According to Morris Massey, what you are now is where you were when. Like all stories, my story has shaped everything I am and all I strive to do as an educator and as a human being. My story has led me to be passionate about the work of promoting diversity, equity, and inclusion in post-secondary education and in the lives of those we teach, serve, and love. It's about promoting acceptance, seeking understanding, and having genuine empathy, respect, and love for the specialness and dignity of every person. I strive to be a support and role model for others who may be struggling with sharing their story and their truth. Most of my career has been in two-year and four-year colleges and universities in Western Pennsylvania. Although I was enjoying a successful and meaningful presidency at Community College of Beaver County near Pittsburgh, I wanted to make one more move in my career to another world, to a place that's highly diverse, where I could support DEI from another angle, addressing the specific needs of diverse communities and helping leverage the pride we take in our diversity to achieve new levels of educational excellence, understanding, and outcomes. About five years ago, when I interviewed for the position of president of Hudson County Community College, I vividly remember entering a building for my first appointment. Immediately facing me as I entered the building lobby was a large gay pride flag. I instantly knew that I was home. And today, our students have coined the phrase, Hudson is home which has become our college's motto and tagline. For the remaining few minutes, I want to speak about the power of education, specifically as it relates to the two overarching and guiding priorities of Hudson County Community College, and they are student success and diversity, equity, and inclusion. For attendees unfamiliar with Hudson County, the college has campuses in Jersey City, the most diverse city in the United States, and Union City, one of the most densely populated cities in the nation as well as other sites throughout the county. 
I firmly believe that education is the greatest antidote to hatred and bigotry and the true gateway to the American dream. It's not lost on me that Hudson County Community College is located in the shadow of the Statue of Liberty, which is a wonderful symbol and metaphor for our college mission. You'll see the image of Lady Liberty in all of our college's communications, website, and materials. My colleagues and friends at HCCC and throughout the statewide and national higher education sectors strive to make post-secondary education affordable and widely accessible in order to promote the intellectual, social, and economic development of our students and our communities. But accessibility isn't enough. As an open access institution, we must help students finish their studies, achieve their goals, and earn credentials that lead to transformational change. Not only are community colleges engines of social mobility and drivers of the economy, but their commitment to access and completion ensures that a college education is attainable for all. And from an economic development perspective, our colleges make it possible for many on public assistance to prepare for family sustaining careers and become citizens who pay taxes and create a vitally needed skilled workforce. A too often, too little known fact, too often overlooked, is that at the end of the day, Investing in community colleges creates net revenue for our communities and our nation. At Hudson County Community College, we're proud to offer an educational pathway for literally anyone who walks through our doors. We serve 18,000 students annually in credit programs and through continuing education and workforce development. We're proud that our high-performing graduates often transfer to great universities like Princeton, Rutgers, Stevens, Columbia, and NYU to name just a few. Many of our students earn prestigious awards such as the nationally competitive Jack Kent Cook, Goldwater, New Century Transfer, and other scholarships. We have an open admission policy at HCCC. We don't select our students. They select us. Our mission is to serve every student who enters our doors, to meet students where they are and help them achieve their educational and life dreams. We don't expect our students to be college ready. Rather, we strive to ensure that our college is student ready. Our faculty, staff, and trustees consider themselves partners with students in their educational journeys. That requires us to be ever conscious of the needs and life barriers that can get in the way of our students finishing their programs and achieving their dreams. At Hudson County Community College, we have a collective laser focus on removing barriers in order to support students and their success. And the barriers are formidable. 80% of incoming first-time, full-time Hudson County Community College students place into English as a second language, developmental English, and or developmental math, significantly delaying their time to completion. And frankly, time and the related expense of time are among the greatest barriers for our students. We're proud of our robust English as a Second Language program with about 1,000 students registered every semester. These students are diverse. Some have been here for many years, while others are recent immigrants. Some have advanced degrees from their home countries, while others lack basic grammar skills in their native tongue. And many speak little or no English. We have a remarkable number of students who start their college degrees not speaking English in an English-speaking institution. Many of our students are undocumented. Many are DACA students. We're assiduously developing and refining programs and supports, including a new ESL proficiency certificate and various academic support interventions, such as boot camps and enrichment programs. We're reducing the time students spend in developmental education. At HCCC, we have a very successful program called the Educational Opportunity Fund, or EOF, in which students have, have assigned counselors who meet and engage with them regularly and receive financial stipends when they achieve academic milestones. Each year, we're grateful to receive funding from the state of New Jersey to serve about 200 of our most at-risk students. And in spite of our challenge, the challenges to completing their degrees, the students in our EOF program, the most at-risk students in the community college with the highest number of at-risk students in New Jersey, these students are highly successful year after year. 
since the retention of EOF students is significantly greater than the retention and completion of all other students, we recently used federal stimulus funding to test the efficacy of scaling the successful elements of the EOF program to many more students. We call this program Hudson Scholars. The retention and completion rates for our now 1,500 Hudson Scholars students are consistent with the very high rates of the EOF program. We've also seen a significant decrease in equity gaps among Hudson Scholars students, including African American and Latino students, as a result of the intrusive mentoring, coaching, early alert system, high impact educational practices, financial stipends, and other successful elements of the program model. So our goal is to scale this program model to all of our students over the next few years. We're finding very interestingly that the revenue associated with the increased retention and enrollment of students in this program more than covers the significant investment of added staff, financial stipends, and other costs of delivering this program. As we seek to address the needs of the whole student, we're intently focusing on expanding our culture of care. Our Hudson Helps Resource Center provides holistic services that address students' basic needs outside of the classroom. Temple University's Hope Center surveyed our students twice over the last three years, revealing that as many as two-thirds to three-quarters of our students report challenges of food insecurity, housing insecurity, and or homelessness. We have students who are homeless while attending college. We've come to recognize as a community and an institution that these challenges of our students are at the same time institutional challenges. As our mission focuses on helping students succeed, and ladies and gentlemen, I don't know, I don't care how much tutoring and study assistance a, a student receives, if they can't feed their children, and if they don't know where they're sleeping tonight, they're likely not to succeed. And that has to become part of our mission. So Hudson Helps is a compendium of wraparound services to help students navigate basic life needs that otherwise too often derail a student's educational journey. Hudson Helps provide a, provides emergency funding assistance, food pantries, clothing closets, mental health and social work counseling, external agency services such as SNAP funding, application assistance, single stop technology that helps students identify funding resources they may not know about, tax preparation assistance, and much, much more. In concert, these and other initiatives at all level of our college have significantly increased our students' retention, completion, transfer, and gainful employment outcomes. And the needle continues to move on these mission-centric metrics and outcomes. Diversity, equity, and inclusion is our other guiding principle, and it's interrelated with and integrated into our focus on student success. At Hudson County Community College, we're proud of our organizational culture that recognizes our differences, builds on our commonalities, and celebrates both. We work tirelessly to ensure that every student and employee representing every group or demographic is respected and celebrated. We provide myriad opportunities to look deeper and engage each other in safe spaces. Indeed, we tell our stories, we share our stories, and in so doing, we support one another in often inspirational and life-changing ways. One of my personal heroes, Mr. Rogers, once said, there's no one you couldn't love if you knew their whole story. At Hudson County Community College, we started our DEI journey by creating the President's Advisory Council on Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion in the fall of 2019. PACT Day, as it's come to be known, is comprised of about 40 trustees, administrators, faculty, staff, students, alumni, and community representatives. In the beginning, PACT Day conducted an anonymous, nationally normed climate survey completed by 800 members of our HCCC community, including students, faculty, staff, and trustees. And this community-wide input from the survey led to the development of our first DEI action plan. At PAC Day's recommendation, we've created the position of Vice President for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, a cabinet-level leader reporting to the President, and we've appointed additional DEI professional and support staff. Very importantly, these resources and supports in which we are investing are sustaining and expanding the work and dreams of the college community. 
It's not just top down, it's sustaining organic uh, work that's happening throughout the college. Truthfully, DEI has galvanized all members of our college family. We're very proud of our strong local partnerships with organizations such as Jersey City Pride, Women Rising, the New Jersey Office of Diversity and Inclusion, Save, Save Latin America, New Jersey Reentry Corporation, our Latino Advisory Council, African American Outreach Committee, and so many others. We've partnered with Cornell University to offer their nationally recognized eCornell Diversity and Inclusion Certificate Program to over 150 Hudson County Community College students, faculty, and staff. We partnered with the Association of College and University Educators, or AQ, to offer ongoing best practice instructional and other professional development that's anchored to principles of diversity, equity, and inclusion. We offer gender equity and Title IX immersion training to all of our students and faculty in various modalities and, and settings. Over 1,000 uh, community members have participated to, to date. Our staff and students have created an in-house student leadership development program focusing on DEI concepts like unconscious bias, inclusion, and social justice. With leadership and support from PAC Day, we're developing and updating college-wide policies and procedures as part of our continuing work to remove barriers and promote inclusion. These include a new children on campus policy and very importantly, a preferred name policy among many others. To conclude, none of this would be possible without the strong and authentic support and commitment of the board and college leadership. Support for DEI is ironclad at the top of the organization and in our budgeting and the delivery of our mission. But equally, and I would add more important, our college community is fully engaged in and owns this work, and nearly to a person our community champions and supports DEI as a guiding principle and organizational priority. So this bottom-up, organic, grassroots, enga grassroots engagement of the entire college community is essential to meaningful reform and the integration of diversity, equity, and inclusion principles and practices into every part of the institutional fabric and culture. At Hudson County Community College, we're enormously proud to have supported the top and widespread ground up engagement throughout the college. And we're proud to have been named a top college for diversity by Insight into Diversity magazine and a great college to work for by Modern Think and the Chronicle of Higher Education. Thank you so much for the honor of telling my story and sharing my thoughts with you today and for all you do to serve the citizens of our great state and our diverse and caring communities and municipalities. Enjoy the rest of the summit. Thank you very much.